Hello, hello, hello. This week I was doing one of my favorite things to do on the internet. Scroll on Facebook Market. Seriously, 80% of the furniture in my house is from Facebook Market. I was browsing when suddenly I said, this would be a perfect idea for a new series. So I purchased something, this, on Facebook Market. I think it's a side table. I've decided to call this series Facebook Market Flips. I think we all know what a flip is, but if you don't, it's basically when you take something old and fix it and paint it or whatever and turn it into something new. Some people flip houses, some people flip pieces of furniture, other people flip pieces of clothing, which I actually have done before on my channel. But in today's video, I guess I am flipping a piece of furniture. I guess we could consider it a furniture flip. Huh. The wood is actually quite dirty, has a lot of dust on it. So I'm taking out my cleaning spray product and we're gonna wipe it down. The bottom is really gross. Oh my gosh, ew. And the top was also kind of disgusting. After I wiped everything down really thoroughly, I had a very dirty paper towel that I threw out and took out my white gesso. Yes, I did finally buy gesso. I've only shown and used it once in one video a couple of weeks ago, so if you haven't seen that video, you might be kind of shocked. It took me forever to buy this product. I think over a year I was talking about it, and I finally did purchase it. So we can all get off my back. I have the gesso, I have tried it, and I do have to say, it might work. My only hesitation is that it really does look like white paint, and I'm not really sure how many coats of white paint this piece would have required had I not used the gesso, but I did use the gesso, and then I used one coat of white paint. I feel like if I didn't use the gesso, I probably would have done two coats of white paint, maybe three. So maybe the gesso is doing something. It's just, I'm not sure. I clearly have glowing reviews for this gesso. Everyone should buy gesso. It is very useful. <laughs> After I finished painstakingly painting each of these little spindly legs, I moved up to the top part of this piece, which was very rough. And I actually had to take out some sandpaper and sand it down before I added the gesso because it was just not gonna look good if I didn't sand it first. After I had sanded it, it was actually quite smooth and everything kind of looks normal now, so. All right, now we have a fully gessoed piece and we're ready to take out our colors. I have chosen this range of yellow up to this blue color, taking out my paint palette and we're starting off with the pale yellow color. I decided to paint the bottom part of these legs with the pale yellow color. And honestly, painting this part was probably probably one of the most annoying parts of this whole video because one, the pale yellow is extremely transparent and I had to do so many coats that I lost count of it after I was done. I was like, how many coats did I do? Five, six, seven, eight, I don't know. The other reason is that legs are cylindric. They're like circular and you can't really see what you're painting on the other side unless you physically turn the whole thing around Everything goes out of focus. I'm like, fo I'm not even focused right now on what I'm actually painting. And I had to hold my camera while I was painting with one hand. I mean, I had it stationary at times, but then like most of the time I had to hold it so that you could actually see what I was doing. And that made painting the legs. The worst part of this project. Let's paint with some celery. I enjoy this paint color name way too much. Oh my gosh, I think the paint in my hallway is also called Celery. Totally different brand, but I'm pretty sure it is Celery. Wow. Okay, I'm painting the spindly legs and trying to create a ombre with it, going from yellow into pale green. And then Robin's Egg Blue. Honestly, I'd say it's weird, but that's a pretty common name for paint. I've seen that many times and I like the color. The Robin's Egg Blue did give me some issues because I used the same paintbrush as the green paintbrush at first and then I had to go back and change my paintbrush so I got a clearer blue at the top. And then I switched back to the green paintbrush so I could blend it. 
this is all information that I probably did not have to share with you because you probably would have never noticed. But I just wanted to share because I lived it and creating the ombre on these legs was so annoying and I was so happy to finally be done and have a fully ombre set of legs. And now that we have the ombre, we're taking out the blue and I'm going to add the blue to the top part of this side table. I hope that's what this is. I feel like I always get basic things wrong. One time I called a tiger a fox and everyone was very mad. One time I thought a squishy that was holding a spoon was actually holding a weight. I have mislabeled many objects on my channel and if this is not a side table, I am going to be sad because I don't know what else it would be. Maybe it would be something that like holds plants, plant table. That sounds wrong. There's also two mysterious holes at the top of the table, which are concerning to me because I don't know what the heck that's for. This better be a side table, okay guys? No one tell me if it's not, I can't handle it. For the bottom part of this two-tiered side table, I am adding more celery. Delicious. The idea here is that I want this side table to flow from yellow all the way up to the top blue color in an ombre, and I think I did achieve that. So this is the base colors we're working with, and now I'm going to flip it over. Oh yeah, I did flip it over. I had to paint the underside of this, which, I mean, honestly, I could have never shown you the underside of the table, but that's how good of an honest, upstanding American citizen I am. I did paint underneath the table and I broke my <laughs> paintbrush. I took out the celery color again. Once the underside has been painted, I also painted even underneath the little legs with the yellow color. And now we have a fully ombre underside. I'm taking out more saturated versions of the colors I've already used and sliding this table into view so that I can actually paint something on the bottom table. Here's a side angle of what you're looking at so you can orient yourself. And I have decided to paint a floral arrangement on this bottom table. I'm starting off with the white and the blue. I'm adding white to the top part of the paintbrush blue to the bottom and blending them together. And then I'm using that to create some petals for a very large flower. I don't know what type of flower you'd consider this, maybe a rose? Roses aren't actually blue in real life. I don't think they are unless you dye them, but I'm creating a blue rose. So it's a special rose that I have created specially for this project. I used to actually paint flowers like this in the past, and I haven't done it in a while, but I love the way it turned out in this video. The basic idea is that you like start with the outer petals and you slowly work your way in, and you just have to make sure that the lightest color is always on the outside of the petal and the darkest color is always on the inside, and you should be kind of good. You just go in like a circular motion, and it really creates a very fun looking rose. Once I was done with my blue roses, it was time to add a a bunch of leaves. So I took out the dark green and the light green, kind of blended those together with a little bit of the blue still on the paintbrush. And I created my first really big leaf. If you have to redo something, you can always redo it because like the paint is wet and you can just paint over it. So that's kind of the fun part about doing this. You can see here, I didn't like the way those two leaves looked. I wanted there to be more blue in it. So I just redid them and then added the inner part of the leaf again. I felt like the leaf on the bottom left right there was looking a little weird, but that's okay. I decided to go back over it and make it look more like the bigger leaf on the right side. For those of you who have been asking, here we have a bump date. That is my bump. And now the worst tragedy that has ever happened on my channel. I have literally never done this in three years of being on YouTube. I somehow deleted the rest of my footage for creating this bottom flower. Not the bunnies. But have no fear because I decided I have to do it again. So I'm going to do something similar on the top part. Really all we missed on the bottom was I added a bunch more tiny leaves and then some swirly vines, but it was really sad to me because I love the way the bottom came out and I really just wanted the footage to be in this video, but it somehow got deleted, but that's okay. I'm gonna move past it because I'm actually creating something very similar in style on the top table. I'm just using yellow instead of blue. 
Okay, here we are. I've added all of my yellow flowers, and now we're going to add some green leaves. I'm doing my fun big leaf, making sure that it's even in color on both sides. After creating my biggest leaf, I'm adding some medium-sized leaves and creating stems for those, and then I'm doing my smaller leaves. When I was filming my blue flower bouquet, the smaller leaves are the main thing that got cut out. I added a lot of smaller leaves it really makes the whole thing look like a bouquet of flowers. The leaves are of varying shades. There's some light green, some dark green, and even some yellow leaves. For the yellow leaves, I used yellow and white, the same colors that I used for the roses, and I feel like using those colors in the leaf area, it adds some, I don't know, color to the leaves, and it just makes things come together a little bit better. My bouquet was kind of sitting off center on the tabletop, so I did have to add a bunch more leaves to the lower right side of this bouquet, which kind of makes it look like one of those cascading bouquets. I like it because it's a little different than the bottom one, and that's interesting. I added some green swirly things. I just like twirled the vines in different directions until I liked it. I feel like the type of paintbrush I was using or maybe just the type of paint was not really conducive to creating vines, so I did kind of mess them up in some places. Ignore my lime green yoga ball. I'm taking out my Liquitex high gloss varnish and I'm using this all over this piece. The varnish will seal in the paint and I also really love this varnish. I was looking for a high gloss varnish and I think someone in the comments suggested the Liquitex version. It's amazing, would highly recommend. If you like a glossy finish on your paintings, this is it. It's the best thing ever. It's a little expensive, but it is worth it to me. And here we have the final result of the bottom blue bouquet. I'm a little sad that the footage got deleted that you couldn't see me paint the tiny leaves, but I feel like you guys saw most of it, so it's probably fine. Up top, we have another bouquet with the yellow flowers. I love this one as well. I like that the top one is a little smaller than the bottom one, but they kind of go together. Aside from my absolute love of the flower bouquets, I really love the green, blue, yellow color choice and the ombre effect that's going on here. This is just probably one of my favorite things I have ever created on my channel, and I want to do more Facebook market flips. Or maybe I just want to paint more flower bouquets. Does this flower go on this? Is this a flower holder? No, right? No. If you want to see me paint on more stuff, I have a playlist called Painting on Stuff, I think. It's linked in one of these two boxes. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week for another video. Bye.